So for today's discussion, I will be talking to you about activity cost drivers. Our objectives for this chapter is first, should be able to define cost behavior for fixed, variable, and mixed costs. Explain the role of the resource usage model in understanding cost behavior. Third is to separate mixed costs into their fixed and variable components using the HILO method, scatter plot method, and method of least squares. Fourth is to evaluate the reliability of a cost equation. Next is discuss the role of multiple regression in assessing cost behavior. And to describe the use of managerial judgment in determining cost behavior. Now first is we will move to the first objective, which is define cost behavior for fixed, variable, and mixed costs, which I believe you are already familiar with. So if you remember in chapter two, we look at the ways costs should be used to determine the cost of goods sold and the value of ending inventory. So these costs are important for preparing external financial reports like the income statement and the balance sheets since they have effects on those financial statements. Now the costs that are reported on these statements are organized per function. So as you can remember, the bana gi divide to siya as to product cost and the period cost. So moto nga by function siya. Then, um, with that, diba, the functional groups, or however, the functional groups are not helpful at all for budgeting, control, and decision making. So, for these purposes, we need to understand cost behavior. So, let's start. Uh, this is in relation to the example. So, let's start with. Um, fixed cost. Now, uh, before the AK, as I mentioned, we need to understand cost behavior. So, what are cost behavior? When we say cost behavior, it is a general term for describing whether costs change as output changes. So, cost behavior. So, meaning costs react to output changes in many different ways. So, again, money on fixed cost, variable cost, and the mixed cost. So, first is fixed cost. Fixed costs do not vary over the relevant range. So, I believe kabaan naman mo sa fixed cost. No, when we say fixed cost, it remains constant throughout a level of activity output. Now, what's happening level of or um, relevant range, when we say relevant range, kay mo na siya ang range of output over which the assumed cost or output relationship is valid. So, mo na yung ang relevant range. So, again, your fixed cost does not change over the relevant range. Now, what we are talking about here is the total na fixed cost. Again, total fixed cost at ang ipasabot there nga, dili mo change over the relevant range. So, um, when you say fixed cost per unit, is mo na na siya ang katong mo vary na na siya. Or, ang um, fixed cost per unit ni mo is mo change na siya. However, your total fixed cost does not change with regards to the um, relevant range na available. Or, if there are changes in output, your total fixed cost does not change. So, meaning again, constant na siya. So, kana na na example. Now, when we say variable cost, diba? variable cost do change as output changes. So, variable cost has a direct proportion to changes in your output. So, meaning, as your output increases, your variable cost also increases. And then, if your output decreases, your variable cost also decreases. So, again, direct ilahang relationship. Now, 
that is with regards to your total variable cost. Now, if you um, pertain to your variable cost per unit, per variable cost per unit does not change as your output changes. So, bali ra siya ato sa imuhang fixed cost. So, um, as you can see here, diba, variable cost is represented or can be represented by a linear equation. Okay, then again, diba, varia, um, direct man or proportional man or relationship sa imuhang units o sa imuhang cost. So, as you can see here, as your units increase, ni increase po ang iyahang cost. Mo na linear ilahang relationship. So, how do you get the total cost then? So, total, uh, total, not total cost, but total variable cost. So, total variable cost is your variable cost per unit times your number of units. Sa ana, Arsaya? So, that is your variable cost. So, sa variable cost ni mo, is yan ang kabakabantay na nanay slope. Diba? Kay, mo change mo siya, or proportional mo nang iyang change. So, there, as you can see, diba? at 120 na units produced, kay ang yahang total cost is at $24,000. So, kana siya. Next is we have mixed cost. Now, of course, by the name itself, mix. So, it is a combination of both a fixed and variable component. So, for example, nadira, ang person or salesperson earns a 10,000 um, salary and a 0.50 commission for each heater sold. So, as you can see, ang imuhang fixed cost or fixed component is the 10,000 na salary and your variable component is kato ng commission. So in getting your mixed cost di ay So in getting your mixed cost, or your total cost, kung mixed cost siya, it is your fixed cost plus your total variable cost. So mo na ang pagcompute nimo sa imuhang mixed cost. Therefore, for instance din he, kaning example Diba, if how much is ang total cost sa kanang nga salesperson, that is your fixed component, or your fixed cost na 10,000, plus the variable na cost per unit, times kung pila ka book heater iyahang na sold. So, ano ang pag-compute sa imuhang mixed cost? Now, <clears throat> let's move on to cost behavior activities. So, as mentioned, di ba, we only concentrated on the definitions and definitions of fixed, variable, and the mixed cost. However, took for granted the number of factors that are important for determining whether a cost is fixed or variable. So, kanini siya is, di ba, dali na kayo pag-ingon nga, fixed siya, variable cost siya, if identified na siya. But how do we assess could if or how do we classify if a cost is indeed fixed or variable siya? So to assess cost behavior, we must first consider the time horizon. So um, we need to consider time horizon, the resources to accomplish the task and the output measures. So when we say time horizon, it is when you determine whether a cost is fixed or variable, diba? according to its time measurement. So, pade long run, pade short run. Now, in determining whether short run siya or long run, kay diri mo kap in gihapon nga, mo vary siya. Kay diba each business has a different time period, diba? One, one um, factor can be considered as a short run for one company, then it can be considered as a long run for another company. So, again, in um, the length of either short run or long run period depends to some extent on 
management, judgment, and the purpose for which cost behavior is being estimated. So, for example, by submitting a bid on a one-time special order may span only a month, then long enough to create a bid and produce the product. So, kana siya is considered siya as short run. Now, other types of decision such as dropping a product line or adjusting the product mix will, will affect a much longer period of time. So, in that case, is pwede siya makonsidered as a long run. So, kana depende sa management if or na involvement should sa management if ever how they will consider a product as a short run or a long run. So, kana siya. So, like, for example, long run siya. So, kasagaran is, butang siya sa kanang mga fix. Diba? Fix, mga fix variables. Okay. May incur mo siya for a long period of time. Now, yung mga short run is pwede, pwede siya ni mo ma-identify as a um, variable cost. So, in, again, mo, mo determine gya na or mo vary gya na sa management na nga judgment if unsa mga ni siya. So, muna, it is important on the part of the management nakabaw ka mag-identify kung unsa ang effects and ang cost sa imuhang process as a whole. So, kana siya in regards to time. Kana in regards to time. Now, next is the resources to accomplish the task. Now, of course, every activity needs resources to accomplish the task it has to do. So, resources may be in the form of materials, labor, and capital. So, these inputs, kanimo resources, of course, are your inputs, are then used to produce an output. So, um, the output, meaning, the output would be um, mukaan siya, mo vary siya, depende sa imuha raponggi input, diba? Like, kung pilang imuha gi input, of course, mo, mo, mo dependent ang imuhang output sa imuhang input. Now, the question is, how do we measure this output? Diba? <clears throat> so, one way of measuring is if we consider the um, ang pinaka-common jud is if we consider um, the number of times the activity is performed. So, mo man natin nakabili. No? So, for example, um, your activity is moving materials from one department to another. So, a good form of measure of output is kung kapila siya ni move of materials. So, mo na imuhang, imuhang output measure. Now, another way of measuring is through the use na of your drivers. So, as you can remember sa chapter 2, di ba, na ito yung mga katong sa driver tracing is um, na ito yung mga cost drivers. So, meaning, these are um, observable uh, casual fact or causal factors that measure the amount of resources a cost object uses. So, activity drivers Explain changes in activity costs by measuring changes in activity used or output. So, um, the narita. So the choice of driver is tailored not only to the particular firm but also to the particular activity or cost being measured. Therefore, in order to understand the behavior of costs, we must first determine the underlying activities and associated drivers that measure activity capacity and usage. And the need to understand this cost-activity relationship leads us to the determination of an appropriate measure of activity driver. Now, activity drivers can be divided into two, the um, production drivers and the non-production drivers. <clears throat> so, when we say production drivers, it explains changes in costs as unit or it explains changes in costs as units produce changes. So, for example, di ba ng pounds per direct material or your direct labor. So, dali ni mo siya ma-associate da yun kaya tungkol part mo siya sa imuhang production. So, muna ang imuhang mga production drivers. So, your inputs have a direct relationship with your 
um, production level. So, for instance, kana sa materials nimo, di ba, ma-measure man nimo pila ka kilos, pila ka liters imuhang gamiton. So, kana makabaw da yun ka kung pila ang imuhang um, production driver o makabaw da yun ka sa imuhang production driver, di ba? Dali ka kayo pag-identify. Now, if arita sa non-unit level or non-production, kay, ko ano siya, um, it explains changes in cost in terms of in terms other than changes in units or production or kato na ni siya mga dili directly related na gyud sa imuha production na process so for example okay ni siya as i mentioned no direct relationship example depreciation and the set up cost incurred to change the items produced so example arita sa to ang set up cost di ba um for instance is mag luto ka Diba? Kung magluto ka o uh, magluto ka o for instance, ibutang na to uh, magluto ra ka for good for ka ng duha ka tao ra. Diba? Ang pagkuha ni mo sa ingredients ana, ang imuha mga gamiton yung mga materials ana siya is um, or bus, ang pag-prepare ni mo sa mga ingredients pag-prepare ni mo sa mga materials kay, like ang pag-set up ni mo before ka magluto is koan siya same ra gihapon siya maskin if magluto pa ka or not exactly same gud pero duol duol ra gid siya if maskin magluto pa ka for a puta na to 10 ka people di ba ang imuha na lang is for instance imong gamiton nga plato is mas dako na lang kay tungod na po naman ka imong magluto na maka for na po ka people now unlike kung duhara or tulo di ba pero so kana siya may basically is um, yung mga setup cost is di kaya siya mo change yun kaya siya or if na may change is very minimal and irrelevant ra. then another example is your um, depreciation so, of course kabaw naman ta sa depreciation no? regardless kung gigamit pa na niyo ang kanay mo hang um, asset din ha is mo depreciate ba yung kikihapon siya so it is considered as or sa so, kailangan nga po niyo siya i-take into account and then it is or it still forms part of your, or makonsidered ya po siya as your activity driver. So, activity drivers and cost behavior. So, in a functional based cost system, kanang FPM, cost behavior is assumed to be described by unit level drivers only. Okay, again, di ba ka remember mato sa tong functional nga kuan siya katong um kato akong gi-mention sa first part na production o period cost ana na siya yung pagkuan so was more on ari kamulin sa unit level siya however in activity base by both unit level and not un non unit level drivers are used so thus muna siya abc costing or abc system produces a much richer view of cost behavior than functional based system. Now, let's move on to the second objective, which is to explain the role of resource usage model in understanding cost behavior. So, uh, Diba, when we are understanding cost behavior, so as mentioned ganiha katong sa time period, um, short runs, short run and long run cost behavior are related to activities and resources needed to perform that them. Now, aside from katong time period, is we also need to take into consideration the capacity. Now, when we say capacity, it is simply the actual or potential ability to do something. capacity. So, when we talk about capacity for an activity, we are describing the amount of the activity, activity that the company can perform. So, how much capacity is needed depends on the levels of performance required. So, usually, we can assume that the capacity needed corresponds to the level where the activity is performed 
efficiently. So, this efficient level of activity performance is what we call the practical capacity. So, on occasions, there is excess capacity. And to see how that happens and how it affects cost behavior, we need to look at flexible and committed resources. So, what's any flexible or committed resources? So, my second dimension. So, when we say flexible resources, these are resources that can be acquired as needed and used. So, they are usually acquired from outside resources where the terms of acquisition do not require any long-term commitment. So, kana, kasi ganun, or kito mga short-term na siya. And thus, the organization is free to buy only the amount needed. Uh, so, as a result, the quantity of the resources supplied equals the quantity demanded. Exam example ani is, kanay mohang direct materials, di ba? Mao, ang imuhang paliton is kung mao lang ang imuhang kailangan or imuhang ma gamit. So, kana siya, mo na siya makonsider ang imuhang direct materials as a flex flexible na resource. So, since the cost of the resources supplied as needed equals the cost of resources used, the total cost of the resource increases as demand for the resource increases. Thus, the cost of flexible resource is often considered as a variable cost. Now, what are committed resources? Kanisa siya is opposite. So, um, flexible ni mo is purchase when they are needed ra. However, committed resources are those resources acquired in advance. Oh, so, they are acquired by the use of either explicit or implicit contract to obtain a given quantity of resource regardless of whether the amount of the resource available is fully used or not. So, meaning committed resources may have a use capacity since more may be available than it is actually used. So, unlike flexible resources, sa so imuhang committed resources is pwede na ka maka-incur o mga excess capacity. May example na niya is factory building, pwede pod ang imuhang mga machineries. So, for example, ang kana imuhang, di ba, ang machineries is naman na sila ay murag pila ka buo ka imuhang mabuhat ani nga product in a day or ipila ihang capacity nga produce in a day. So, for example, maingun ta nga, ang kana siya nga machinery is makabuhat siya o 10,000 units of product in a day. Pero ito, ang actual is, uh, pero in actual is, ang ilang na gamit ra or ilang na produce ra is 8,000. So, meaning, na siya excess nga 2,000 sa ihang or wala ma-utilize na capacity sa imuhang machinery. Okay. As per capacity, ihang full capacity when used is makabuhat man 10,000 pero ang na-create ra is 8,000. So, dyan ang mukam in nga na siya ay excess. So, <clears throat> this next. So, committed resources can be be can be fixed committed cost or can be a committed discretionary cost. So, when we, um, when the annual expenses associated with the multi-period category is independent of actual usage of the resource, thus, this can be considered as a committed fixed cost. So, uh, and they provide long-term activity capacities. So, as mentioned, katong mga equipment ni mo, building, di ba, nakalease mo na siya. So, whether imo na siyang gibayarad, ay, whether imo na siyang gigamit or wala, is magbayad mang gihapon ka niya, di ba? So, those are your committed fixed costs. Well, a second and more important example of committed resources concerns organizations that acquire resources in advance through implicit contracts, which or usually with their salaried and hourly employees. So, these shorter-term committed resources are defined as your um, committed discretionary cost or your discretionary fixed cost. So, kana siya. Um, these costs are incurred for the acquisition of short-term activity capacity. So, one on difference between your um, committed fixed cost and your discretionary fixed cost. 
Now what we have here is your step cost, sorry, step cost behavior. So previously or as mentioned, di pa ngato ang kuan sa our assumption of our cost function is that continuous siya. But in reality, some cost functions are discontinuous ang yahang behavior pattern. Kung yun ta continuous is kato straight straight agi siya like linear ang imo ang sundon. However, or like mo na siya straight straight agi na imo ang pattern ba? Pero when we say discontinuous, ah, when we say discontinuous is ang yahang gi exhibit is a step down na or step cost na pattern. So, when we say step cost, it displays a constant level of cost for a range of output. Ano siya? It displays a constant, ano yung hindi, constant siya for a certain range of output. And then, mo jump siya into another level. And then, mo constant na sa siya. So, muna siya ang imuhang step cost. So, muna nang itawag siya yung step cost. Kaya mura man siya mo-form og steps. Good. Ay, ay, wala dito yun. Basta mura siyang mo-form og steps nga kada jump niya is ato siya to a higher level and then ang iyahang width mo ay mo-determine sa iyahang or kada iyahang range is mo ay mo-determine sa iyahang step na width. So, kana, which na rin yun ang example it. Now, <clears throat> with step cost, di ba as mentioned is kada step ni mo is mo change man siya. So, um, the cost of a single change order is a combination of its fixed cost and its variable cost. So, to calculate the fixed cost per unit, we need to calculate the fixed activity rate, which is calculated as your total committed cost divided by your total capacity available, while your variable activity rate is your total um, cost of flexible resources divided by your capacity use. So, as you can see, sa imuhang fixed activity rate, ang gigamit niya or ni base siya sa imuhang committed cost and the capacity available. Then, for your activity rate is the actual capacity siya. So, this is because the flexible resources are purchased as na si Sari. And then, ang imuhang na po siyang na gamit or na use your podimo. So, typically, the functional based costing system provides information only about the cost of the resources purchased. However, an activity based management system tells us how much of the activity is used and the cost of its usage. So, furthermore, the relationship between total resources available and resources used is, is makuha ni mo siya si by computing, di ba, your total resources used plus your unused capacity, so muna yung mohang total nga resource available. Now, why is it important for the management or for you to know about this? So, it is important because it gives managers critical information about their ability to expand or contract production. So, for instance, di ba, if makahibaw na ka sa imuhang ang capacity available o sa imuhang capacity na nagamit ra, is makitaan mo na ni mo nga. For instance, ang imuhang normal na or what you normally experience is na kayo ma-incur yun ng mga excess capacity. So, as management, mo think ka, why are we incurring, di ba? Kung anong naamantaan ni excess capacity, nga nung wala mo na ito na maximize ang ito ang resources. Then, if na na kayo mga answers, ano, so you can, another question na pwede mo come up is, how do we maximize this resource para mapahimus lang, gaya po na ito siya. Kaya, di ba, it is considered still as your cost, especially anhi ka sa fix, di ba? Maguna yung mohang capacity available, tapos yung mohang variable is mag-base ra ka sa yung mohang capacity use. So, unsa may mahitabo ato yung mohang mga unused capacity, di ba? Mura, mura to siya makuan nga, oh, wala niyo ma-utilize ng mga resources, di ba? Nag-incur ka og cost, pero wala niyo mo siya mapahimus lang. So, di ba, wala, wala kay return nga makuha gika na to sa cost nga imuhang na um, na-incur. 
So, muna siya as part of the management, mag-think ka kung sa itong pwede mabuhat aning atuang excess capacity or atuang unused capacity. So, diha na dahil ito mo come in ang mga decisions about pwede maka-create ba o additional another product. Diba? Kung make use kaya po na itong, um, for example, machinery. Uh, mo make use kaya po na itong mga machine. So, mo create og laing product na ang katong ang capacity nga ibuhat is gamit or ang capacity nga gamiton is gamit ato imuhang ang new capacity ana so kana siya for a new product line or na mga expansions so muna siya nga dapat kabogid ka unsaon pag utilize sa imuhang capacity og uh, first is kabog ka kung pila dapat imuhang capacity sa imuhang mga resources and then once ma determine na nimo is diha na dayto mo come in nga Um, how do you utilize those capacities? So, sa pag-determine mo kung saan yung pag-utilize, is dapat maka-identify sa ka-first, kato na sa mo fixed cost, sa imong variable cost. Okay. These are the factors, man, that affect your capacity. So, once imuha na siya ma-determine, dito na din ka as management nga, mo-form na din ka-decisions on what you can do given these factors available. So, muna siya. So, kani implications? So, Um, the activity-based model just or the activity-based model described can both improve managerial control and decision making. So, pana siya nga ko ang dimension no. So it's in, um it's encouraging managers to pay more attention to controlling resource usage and spending because of course makita man ni mo gyud kung asa ka nga area wala nimo ma-utilize kung asa nga area ang nagamit gyud nimo diba so makabaw ka nga uh, this kani nga kuan is wala kay nato utilize kay dako ato ang excess capacity capacity dere diba so meaning additional spending na siya sa tuwa pero ato na utilize so kana siya it's providing information to control capacity efficiently and then it's allowing managers to calculate change in resource supply and demand. So, muna siya mga implications um, sa kato-ato ang activity base.